Welcome back to Greyfriars Kirkyard in Edinburgh. And this is where my YouTube journey began. And I'm still not going to talk about that dog. <laughs> Greyfriars Bobby. I've always walked past this one on uh, every time I've been here. Don't know why. Probably because it's near the entrance. Maybe want to see the good stuff. Still interesting. So once again, just doing a walkthrough, just to experience the kirkyard, and um, see if we can. Um, see or feel anything from Bloody Mackenzie, the local poltergeist. Are these are Mackenzie's as well. William, Alice, Helen. Could be related, not sure. So George Mackenzie was a lawmaker here in Scotland. Some say he was evil and too ruthless. Others just say he was following the letter of the law. But he did let a lot of um, prisoners starve to death, be executed and pretty much just live horrible existence in this very graveyard now it is said that Mackenzie is the only ghost here out of hundreds of thousands of people that are buried here purely because all the other spirits are too afraid to show themselves for fear of being punished by George which is um, kind of terrifying on its own isn't it his mausoleum's just up there with the domed roof uh, it's called the black mausoleum and Quite a lot of people have been scratched, bitten, and you often get pushed when you're um, standing outside of it. I've never experienced anything like that here, but you do get a um, bit of a sense of dread when you're outside the mausoleum. Ooh, Jesus, what was that? I thought I'd gone through the floor then frozen pebbles. Yeah, you do get a sense of dread when you're um, standing out the front, so it's not an area I can or want to stay in for very long. This one's quite plain on the inside, isn't it? John Bradpute, I think that says, 1827. The slab in the middle there looks like a bit of a new addition. And there's the black mausoleum. Let's go have a look. So this is it. If you're a bit of a non-believer in spirits and stuff. I'm not saying they are true. They are real even, they might be real to me, but not for you. I never want to push anything on anybody. But come and have a little stand outside of here. And have a peek inside and see what you feel. Right, that's enough for me. <laughs> So 
So where these gates are on the left is the Covenanters prison. And this is a section of the kirkyard that was used as a prison for over a thousand supporters of the National Covenant who have been defeated by the forces at the Battle of Bothwell Bridge or Brig in the Scottish in 1679. Uh, some of the prisoners died here, some were tried and executed for treason, some escaped. Um, some signed an agreement to be loyal to the crown and the rest of them, about 250 I think it was, were sent to the colonies in America where the ship sank near the Orkney Islands and only 48 survived. It's quite an unfortunate and um, sacred piece of ground. Again, not somewhere I like to hang around in. John Adam, architect. Very well suited mausoleum for an architect. So you can see that um, walled section at the back there. That's part of the Flodden Wall which um, surrounded Edinburgh at one time. And that's the reason why um, most of these monuments still exist because they're actually stuck to the wall. Oh hang on, that's... <laughs> That's the reason why the wall still exists, sorry, because the, um, these monuments are stuck to them. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? That full skeleton there. It was before it was eroded. It's cool, isn't it? Very morbid, but not seen as morbid at the time. It was um, it was quite trendy. This tour group is hundred percent going to be about the Harry Potter graves. I did cover them in the last video. If you want to see them. So that's uh, 18 Jamaica 1812 yeah I did cover the um, Harry Potter named graves in the last video if you've seen it if not just head back and have a look um, I'm not massively into Harry Potter um, I'm not a 12 year old girl <laughs> so there's not a massive amount of things to, well there is quite a few things to see in this section but they're all a bit samey quite similar but still can enjoy the uh, architecture of them. I think most of these on the left here would have had um, metal bars going over them to create um, what's called a caged. Let's try, try that again. A caged lair, which um, is all to do with um, preventing body snatching keeping people out sort of thing in general. I 
I will be going back to Colton Hill after this where there are some really good examples of cage layers um, there's not many here for some reason I, I would have thought maybe they would at least recreate some to give the place a bit more um, a bit more atmosphere sort of thing I'm assuming they're removed due to being used as metal in the war effort which is when you're walking around the UK you see a lot of um, cut off railings or where railings used to be and they're all using the war effort to make planes and bombs that sort of thing some people replace them and some don't bother but it is quite a common sight to see that in the UK this one's still surviving not sure if it's original gives you some idea of what the place would be like So I always wonder with plaques on the wall like this whether there's remains behind them or whether they're in the ground below especially when there's like multiple ones like that I guess it'll just be um, different wherever you go wouldn't it? This is one of my favourites here with a skull in the middle, he's got his arms and legs looks like he's been pulled apart and I think this is the one with the creepy baby which is also one of my favourites or oh, cherubs aren't they, they're not babies just see it up there where the arch is on the left hand side inside the arch probably a bit far away for this camera I'll try and zoom in <coughs> I remember this bit from the uh, my last video this section had um, a plaque inside it and it was quite weathered I'll try and put it up on screen from my last video um, and I said in the video I said that's not long left before it falls apart and it's not there anymore contrast is playing up a bit in the video I'll try and get a bit closer James Chalmers Esquire keeps going light and dark doesn't it I don't know why but this section of the cemetery or kirkyard, let's use the proper terms of the country we're in I don't know, it always gives me the creeps a bit round here for some reason as in like you can kind of feel a bit of a heavier atmosphere Don't worry, I'm not going to go all paranormal channel on you. I think people have done that to death, haven't they? And it's not really my style. Look at that, would you go in there? I would. <laughs> Yeah, so this section in particular, I always get weird, weird vibes when I'm uh, here. It just doesn't feel right.
Wow, look at that from a design point of view. Got all sorts going on. Cherubs, family shields, crests. They've even got like a Shakespeare character on the left, a skull in the middle, shaking hands with a pharaoh type figure. And a lot of uh, cherubs. These uh, barley twist pillars, quite cool, aren't they? Could just read Thomas on this one. There's the angel standing on a skeleton. A lot more worn, isn't it, than the one next door? I guess it's the different stone or stone quality. I remember last time I was here, I took the tour with Jerry. Hello Jerry if you're watching, um, I'm the guy you singled out and told me to pay attention and um, oh, what did he say, he said pretend the tour isn't about to start or something like that so I looked away and then he said something like why are you looking away, I don't know, weird guy but nice guy. Creepy as hell, isn't it? I'd love to go in and have a closer snoop. So, yeah, uh, Jerry said that the slope on the kirkyard used to be the other way around, so this low point used to be the highest and over at the top where those people are walking up used to be the lowest point but because of the amount of bodies buried here it's kind of changed so the highest point was the lowest point but it's all there's that many bodies in it that it's now become the highest point if you get what I mean I'm not sure if I'm explaining that correctly but um, if that's true Jerry it's pretty awesome, isn't it? So this section feels okay, it doesn't feel as oppressive as the corner we was just in. I don't know, it could be in my head. It's just weird, isn't it? They look like fireplaces, don't they? It's like one big row of fireplaces. But there would have been um, 
plaques inside each of these. An hourglass there at the top. get asked why these old monuments are black and it's just because of all the soot in the air when everybody had coal fireplaces and cities like Edinburgh were more industrial back then so there would have been a lot of um, smog in the air and like I said just, uh, just mainly from people's fireplaces just general pollution Nice one, isn't it, with the angels? It's weird how they're actually attached to people's houses, isn't it? Blocking windows at some points. I wonder what was here first, the windows or the buildings or the monuments. Just gives a good sense of scale doesn't it next to the houses. I don't want to repeat myself from my last video, so we'll just um, I probably will a bit. We'll go see the mort safes, just because not everyone would have seen my old video. And the mort safes are just round the corner, of the church here. So here's the mort safes. These were used to give the body enough time to decompose so it would be useless for body snatchers who sold the bodies for medical research which is quite a profitable enterprise. This one's been Redone. There's only one bar left in that, that's um, original, but it's still nice to have it there in some sort of form, isn't it? Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Greyfriars. I am now heading to another four or five cemeteries today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you in Edinburgh on the next one.